Uh, welcome folks online. Sorry for the uh, mix-up last week, not the mix-up, but the inability to host a service last week. Although there was a worship service that happened here, I understand. And it happened, I think I was so pleased uh, to hear about it. Sounds like Alan played the piano and so the music got played. The lesson got, pardon me? I heard it was gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Well, I, I agree. You know, we just have to keep Alan on and maybe Alan will play a little more often for us. It'd be fantastic. And I, I get it. So, uh, at any rate, uh, but that just, it was just so encouraging. And so thank you, Bruce, again for taking care of communion. Sounds like things went very swimmingly well. Uh, things went well yesterday for those uh, who are here. We had quite a few people yesterday cleaning uh, downstairs and getting things back set up. Not completely set up yet, but I think we can all see that it's almost there. Uh, so we did lose officially and finally on Friday our workers at the church, the Groves, the Groves uh, who have been here since October that this work on the church has been going on, it is done. And so we are so grateful for their work in the church. And again, I, I, I can't wait until we get everything set up downstairs, back to kind of normal. We're going to do a nice dedication and uh, again, have a, uh, have a big community event. So it's going to be fantastic. So again, thank you everybody who showed up yesterday to help uh, clean up and set up and do all of that stuff. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, I don't know if there's anything else. John, we are told to pray for John Golikowski. He's uh, conspicuously absent today, and he is apparently in just a great deal of pain with his knee, and uh, just uh, unable to just get here today. Not sure what that is, and so we've just been asked to keep him in our prayers as well, too. I know there's one other person who was asked to put in our prayers here today, too, yesterday, and I'm so sorry, I can't remember because it was such a chaotic thing. Is anybody here one of the ones who told me to pray for somebody? I can't remember. So, okay, I guess not. So it's somebody who's not here this morning who told me to pray for somebody. Whoever it is, we just hope that God will receive that. And, and uh, hopefully it will come to my mind before our time of prayer. Okay, you will notice that we have read on today. This was supposed to be last week's color. It was supposed to be the week of Pentecost last week. I can't live a whole year without celebrating the season of Pentecost. So we're doing the Pentecost service today, and guess what? Next week we're going to do Holy Trinity Sunday, so we'll be one step behind for a couple of weeks. It's okay. The world will come crashing down on us, and we just, uh, we're just kind of delayed in a, a week or so. But then we'll get caught up a week after that. We'll, we'll skip a week and get caught up with the rest of our our churches throughout the world so that we're on the same lessons and so forth. But these next two weeks, we want to pay attention to these High Holy Sundays. Uh, you're going to find out why I'm so big on Pentecost in just a few moments. But here's the thing. Last week, y'all did the hymns that are in the bulletin. So I am going to pick a handful of different hymns for today. There you go. So we're not singing the same hymns the same Sunday. Two Sundays in a row. So those Sundays are listed up here in the order that we'll be singing them. I will try to remind you of that when we get to those uh, lessons. That's it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship today. We invite you to stand as you make confession before the Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have heard from you and given ourselves to the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, made us alive together in Jesus Christ. It is by grace that you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Now, when God strengthen you with power through the gift of the Holy Spirit, that Christ might live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Again, we sing our opening hymn for today, which is hymn number 807, Come Thou Fall, every blessing.
God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending to us, you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Just by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You're welcome to see. Our first lesson for today will be from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Therefore, Paul writes, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So now there are a variety of gifts of the same Spirit, there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given you a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, according to that same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various gifts and tongues to another an interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and as many members, so are all the members of the body, the many, one body. So it is with Jesus Christ. For in the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jew, Greek, slave, or free. We are all made to drink of that one Spirit. Here is the lesson. Let us read responsibly the 104th Psalm, we begin with the 24th verse. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made of them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number. Living bones small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of them. All of them look to you, give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather. You open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you go, you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of your earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles, you touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing the Lord as long as I live. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice. So there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in, a, in Jerusalem. 
And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astounded, they said, are not these all speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamph uh, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belong to Syria, and the visitors of Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and were perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Listen to what I say. For indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Now this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days I will be, God declares, it will be that, uh, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams. Even upon slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit. They shall prophesy. I will show portents in the heaven above. Signs of the earth below, blood, fire, smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great glory stay. So that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here is the lesson. Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon us this day as we open up your word, that we might be inspired by your presence. For he asks us all in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome to be seated. Hey, that sermon here, I'm not going to do it today. That's okay. I got something better, I hope. Because I had a week extra to think about what I was going to do here for today on this Pentecost Sunday. This is an important day. It is a day where everything changes. Because today is the birthday of the Church of Jesus Christ. I will tell you, even after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus' disciples didn't know what to do. They were sitting there gathering up room, still like knowing where they were to go and what was supposed to happen. It wasn't until the day of Pentecost when they were filled with the Holy Spirit that the church truly became the church. A new faith and social institution was born by the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to tell you this. I encourage you, if you want to write something down, this is what you need to write down. I'm going to say this multiple times. We have the assurance of God's love because we have faith in Jesus Christ who fills us with his Holy Spirit so that we might be sent into the world as ambassadors. Four things here. I'm going to do this another time. I'll do it again. So listen to this. We have the assurance of God's love. Assurance of God's love because we have faith in Jesus Christ who fills us with his Holy Spirit and therefore sends us as ambassadors into this world. This is what the day of Pentecost is all about. Those four things finally all come together and now we get it. See, we see, you know, we kind of make fun of Peter and all the disciples. How come they don't get it? Well, because they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. This changes everything for them. And so let me tell you what this means for us. I'm going to compare the past to our current reality, the present. In the past, in the Old Testament, priests mediated God's presence to the Jews and to the world. They would tell you how high to jump, where you're supposed to go, what you were supposed to do to please God. But guess what? Because now we are the ambassadors of God, we are all the priesthood of God, of believers. Now, let me say this again. We are all the priesthood of believers because of our faith and relationship with Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You're a priest, you're a priest, you're a priest, you're a priest, you're a priest. There's no distinction. There's no separate class of pastor over lay people. We are all members of the church of Jesus Christ, equal in that sense. You are priests. I'm a priest of God that represents God as an ambassador to this world. There's not two classes of people, one boss, the rest of y'all peons. 
There's only one class of people in God's church that is a member of God's church, and I am equal to you, and you are equal to me. All right, that's important to keep in mind. There's no distinction, all right? But the second thing, the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was only given to certain leaders for certain periods of time to accomplish certain jobs. Everybody receives the Holy Spirit who is a believer in Jesus Christ. You now have the tools. I know you're intimidated right now because I just called you a priest. Yes, you, the priest of God, have received every tool that you need in order to accomplish the calling that God has placed upon your heart. Because God has given you the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does for you. So you might be of service. God has given you the tools that you need. So, I have unique gifts. I may be a pastor. In the Bible, you often see the term elder. That's what an elder is. It's a pastor, or we have a board of elders. Do you know why we call it board of elders? That's to indicate that our board of elders is equal to me. We're just, we're set apart by the congregation to certainly guide and direct, but we're not bosses. We're just members of the church of Jesus Christ. Okay? So I have unique gifts. Not too many people want to get up and preach or do some of these things. And maybe I have unique gifts with that. It's great. But that doesn't mean my gifts are more important than yours. Some of y'all were out there in the kitchen putting things away in the kitchen yesterday. I don't want to do that. I don't have that gift. You depend on me. I'm going to think, all right, it's there. I, I don't care. I wouldn't care. It would be chaos, right? Because that's not one of my gifts. Organizational things in the kitchen. And give you a zoom. Not my gift. All right? These are important gifts. And they apply in a lot of different ways. You have unique gifts that God has given you. Spiritual gifts that are meant to bless the world. Ones that only make sense within the context of the church of Jesus Christ. So that's two. So again, number one, you're a priest. You have received the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing. This applies to all. Did you hear any distinction? In the lesson for today, every single person in the Old Testament, only man could be priests of God. Only men, godly men. Okay? I'm making a mockery of this because I just spent all week having to read books from Southern Baptists about how women are lower than men. Because, but in a wide years of justification, because in Genesis, the woman was deceived and gullible and took the fruit and is therefore the weaker sex and therefore God doesn't allow women to ever have any authority over the man because she's gullible. Your jaw's dropping. That's what you get in the Southern Baptist Church, okay? You women would have, seriously, it said the, the one... Good scholar, by the way, who said women have to keep their mouths shut. They're not even allowed to teach a Bible study with a man in it. They're not permitted by God because they're gullible and therefore God puts men in charge. Okay, deal with that one. What does the Bible say? All of us are priesthood of all believers. That kind of flies in the face of that thought process, right? Oh, did, did he include women in that? Yes. Okay? See, here it is. In the Constitution of the United States of America, it says all men are created equal. Well, okay, I'm not sure they had a vision of women with that because, remember, women were not permitted to vote at that time. Of course, non-landowners weren't permitted to vote either, so I think more people were more equal than others, right? It's the foundation of this country. But we understand that should apply to all people. Black people certainly were not included in that all men. So they had really limited vision of what they meant by all. When the Bible says all, there's no Jew, there's no Greek, there's no male, there's, there, there's no female, there's no slave, there's no free. We're all together with that. There's no Greek, there's no Jew. When it says all, it means all our believers are the priesthood of God. That includes black people. That includes women. That includes everybody. So there's no slave, no male, no female, no distinction. So I'm going to tell you women. We got a lot of them here. 
mostly women here today, right? Claim your authority that God has given you. Claim the authority that God has given you. Don't ever let a man put you underneath their thumb, ever, under any circumstances. Sorry, Bruce. What's that? We're getting feedback here. That's right. Beth, you're liking this one, right? You should. I'm serious. This has serious consequences. I don't even know. I, I am going to say this. I was watching an interview with Anita Hill. Chris Matthews interviewed her several years ago. Very fascinating interview. I will confess to being one of those men, like those 14 white men, who were judging this woman and what she was saying. They literally had clips of them saying, to her, well, you know, are you sure you're just not a hysterical woman? This is a Democrat. Senate. Are you sure you just haven't been spurred by men and you just don't like men? These are the types of things that were being said to this woman. And she was asked about that. She said, you know, men have this idea that women cannot be trusted. Did you hear that? Isn't that what the Southern Baptists say? And so their testimony cannot be trusted, so they have to find a reason for this, speaking against men, to justify it. It's powerful. We need to listen. Women need to claim their authority that God has given to them because you too are included in the phrase that you are the priesthood of all believers. You are priests, women, just like any man. So claim your authority. So one, you're all priests. We've been given the Holy Spirit. This includes everybody, but we are called together. This is what the purpose of Pentecost is. We are all together. The disciples were all together in Jerusalem. We need to all be together. The gathering of the church is an intentional gathering. It's not just two Christians running into each other in Walmart. That's not church. Church is when we Christians say we're going to gather together in Christ's name so we can fulfill the purposes that God has given to us. Because it's only in that context that our priesthood and all the gifts that God has given to us make sense. I, I, so... I'm going to preach to people online. I know we got you all watching online right now. I'm so glad that you're able to. I know there are circumstances where some of you physically cannot be here. However, I'm challenging you. This isn't church. You're not doing church watching us do church at home. You need to commit to a body of people where you are gathered together in the name of Christ, physically present with them. This can't be your only church. Watching people online can't be church. It's good to worship God online. I'm glad we're making this available. You need to find a place where you can commit intentionally to gather together with other Christians so that your gifts can be used to be of service to God. So that's my sermon directly to you guys online. Time for you to stop just watching us at home. It's time for you to commit to a body of Christ. It doesn't have to be this one. But it does need to be a body of Christ where you gather intentionally, weekly with them to worship God and use your gifts to be of service. There you go. That's my sermon to you all. Because that's what the church does. It is an intentional gathering of Christians where we, privileged ambassadors of God, represent God's love to this world. And I'm going to tell you why this is important. Because we still have people, as we look, every single week we're praying for another batch of gun violence that takes place. And other people that are harmed, and other people are killed. We're like, why doesn't the government do something about it? Government can confiscate every single gun in this country, and tomorrow there'd still be violence. Because government can't do a darn thing about the violence that actually exists in this country. There's only one thing that can truly change that. And that's us bringing Jesus to people and having their lives transformed. Okay? We need to get out of the church and start going to people who are isolated, who have mental illness, who are struggling or wrestling or whatever it is, and just let them know that Jesus, and the love of, bring, we bring, bring the love of Jesus to them. This is how this world is going to change. Church has got to stop being satisfied being the church in the building. It needs to be a 
a walking group of ambassadors that take God, God's love to this world. Okay. So again, how does this change us? We are all priests. We receive the Spirit. This includes and covers everybody. We gather together intentionally so that we might represent Christ in this world. Why? So we can finish where we started again. Birthday of the church. One of the most important days of the year for us. So happy birthday to you, priests of God. We have the assurance of God's love today. Because we have faith in the resurrected Jesus Christ. As a result, we are filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we might be God's bold ambassadors to a broken and hurting world. So happy birthday. It's our day. Let us give thanks. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again for this wonderful birthday that we celebrate today. And uh, it's our birthday. Birthday of this church, of our church. And what a privilege it is to be priests of God. But help us not to just sit here and be celebrating, oh, we're such good people. We're priests of God. Great, isn't that great? This means something. We're priests for a reason. So we might be ambassadors in this violent world. So help us, God, to be your priests. To claim the authority that you've given us. Send us forth with your spirit so we might confidently face whatever the challenges might be ahead of us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Let us uh, all stand together and sing our hymn of the day, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Hymn number 800.
Well, many of these high and holy days we confess one of our other creeds of the church. Today is the Nicene Creed. Of course, these creeds are based upon Scripture. They are what we hope are accurate reflections of, of the belief that we share as Christians that unite us over thousands of years. It's fantastic. And throughout the entire world. So we give thanks this day as we can make confession of our, our faith in our Lord. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true to God from true God, begotten, of, made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the world to come, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather before you in prayer, knowing that you hear our prayers, and my prayers are not better than anybody else's. To me, that's just part of the sermon here, too. I should have included Because you don't hear my prayers any more than the prayers of the people in the pew or the prayers of the people at home. They're just as efficacious. But I hear pray, representing those prayers, and trust that you'll hear the prayers of those on the hearts of those that are praying today prayers that maybe I just don't understand or I'm unaware of. So if there are concerns upon your hearts today that I don't know about, pray. God will hear your prayers as powerfully as God hears mine. And so we lift up those of whom I'm aware that we should pray. We heard about John today. He's not able to worship with us, for that we're sad. We pray that you bring healing to his knee. For Carrie, for Rocco and Noah, for Tina and Jackie, Harry, Carissa, I'm so excited to see her filled with life again. And uh, we're so thankful for everybody's prayers. It's been a long five-year journey for her. We pray for Jeff and Judy and Joanne, this is Byron Sherwood, Jim, Mikey, for his family, his mom and his dad, for you know their needs. And God, my name is in the bulletin. You know what? I, through the hands of a surgeon, I had surgery a week ago, and my eye is doing fine. I know I missed Sunday last week, and there's a reason for that. If you want to know and you have a relationship with me, I certainly can tell you it's my own dumb fault in one sense, but it's just certainly a result of, of the surgery. But the eye is doing better. I'm seeing better than I have in over 10 years. And so I'm so grateful for everyone's prayers and for your healing uh, that... Uh, was brought to Dr. Connor. So I'm grateful for all those who had hands in that. For those who are struggling with cancer, for John and Bob, for Mike and Pam, for Joseph and Sam, for Mike, for Yasmin, for all of their families, God. They would be with them as well, too. We continue to lift up Ukraine, and I'm just sad that we have to keep lifting this country up every single day. It's frustrating me. Because I want this to end as all of us do. The justifications we use to create violence, God. And it just breaks my heart. So I just pray for the safety of its citizens and for an ending to this senseless war. The same is true for the violence in our own streets. And God, I didn't mean to want to dismiss the activity of our government. Our government does the best job that possibly can, making difficult decisions. But government can't change people's hearts. Only you can. So I pray that you would help us to be a key 
and bringing an end to violence in this world. We also lift up our partners, and we do not go alone, for our Bishop Lumuku Cherica, our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, and our ELCA. We pray that you bless them as they work to, to nourish our congregations. And for all of our partners and pastors in our Slovak Zion Synod, as well as locally here at Mana, New Day, St. John's, that you might continue to bless them. For our loved ones, wherever they might be, and there are many more who are home today watching the service because they can't get here. And I know, and I understand, I hope none of them heard that my sermon today is a judgment of that. Because I know that many of the folks we named, Pauline and Arlene and Peggy and Dorothy, and Anne, and Mary Jo, and Natalie, and Laverne, and Gil. I know many of these are, are none of them are able to come on Sunday. But I know many of them watch every single Sunday too. We're grateful that we have that privilege to be able to at least be a part of the life in that way. But even that wherever they might be, I just ask you to help them commit to the Christians around them, because they still have a job to do to be of service, to be a blessing to the nurses, to the doctors, to the other residents, wherever they might be. So I'm praying that you inspire them by your spirit that they might be your church sent forth to that place where they are called right now. Lord, whatever else is on our hearts and minds, we lift these concerns to you this day. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray. We trust your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue our service with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right duty and our joy that we should at all times and places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, that true pastoral lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin and who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all other creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join our unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread and wine. 
Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Bring new life into us and send us forth in peace, burning with justice and love. Come, Holy Spirit. And so it is with all of your holy ones of all times and places with earth. Create all its creatures, sun, moon, and stars. We praise you, O God, blessed Holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to take the opportunity to prepare the meal that God has so graciously provided. Now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus bless you and keep you in His grace and peace now and forever. Let us pray. O oh God, we give thanks to you. You have set before us this feast today, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in your need, that we might give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive the Lord's blessing. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his favor and peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn. And if you cannot see, it's hymn number 886. 4,000 times the same.